With yesterday's patch of Fallout 76, it seems like several changes were kind of secretly added to the game. If you missed my video yesterday, I actually talk about the official changes we got with the patch and even some of those secret changes. But I made that video as soon as I could, waiting on the servers to go back up, so I didn't have the full spectrum of reports. Now that we do, it seems like a number of nerfs have been made to various things in the game. That meaning that simply things are less powerful. There's lower spawn rates, there's less items being produced, and in this video I'll talk about all the ones that have been confirmed and a few of them that have been suspected. This isn't the first time Bethesda has done these secret changes that don't make it to the patch notes. At one point they actually patched server hopping to an extent, so item containers don't respawn when you server hop, and of course a couple of patches ago they made it so FPS was no longer limited to 62 on PC. Even at that point I commented how it was really odd that they made a positive change to the game, fixed something that a lot of people are upset over, and didn't kind of take in the good graces or the praise from the community because they never told anyone. Of course that was added in the most recent patch notes, but either way I just want to mention that this isn't something new. So when we left off yesterday there was two pretty big bugs with Fault 76 that were immediately obvious. First and foremost, new Numerous users were crashing to desktop when trying to launch the game following this new update. And even beyond that, there was a pretty big issue where the excavator power armor no longer gave you the bonus 100 carry weight. That wasn't affecting everyone, for me it didn't actually change anything. There at least a hotfix for the crash to desktop around 12 hours ago now. Although it doesn't seem like the power armor has actually been fixed, a lot of people can fix it on their own. Even beyond that, one other bug that seems to have popped up as a result of this maintenance is actually things disappearing from certain people's stash. So one guy reported that his entire stash was gone, some other people in the comments backed this up by saying a few items were missing from their stash. This could be one of those issues where they did something right before the servers went down and that never was saved. As far as the person that lost his entire stash, I don't know about that one. But there were modifications to stash weights, so I wouldn't be shocked if maybe there were some glitches along the way. So as to what is actually changed and wasn't in the patch notes, some of these have now been added to the patch notes. People immediately noticed that workshops had been nerfed in numerous ways. One of the community managers commented on this saying, these resource collector adjustments were not intentionally omitted. We've updated the patch notes with the following information. Workshop Higher level resource collectors now generate ore instead of scrap. But then also resource collector accrual rates and carrying capacity have been slowed for each resource, including ammo and fusion core collectors. So those are two pretty big nerfs, in particular to the munitions factory and any of the various places that do give you fusion cores. People are reporting on the fusion core side, while it used to give you up to 10 per hour, now it only gives you 1 per hour. And even beyond that, for the ammo production, it seems like it was roughly halved, and the carrying capacity, so how much ammo could actually be stored in the little machine itself, is reduced from 400 to 200. It's immediately obvious when you go here that the ammo production is way less, you're simply getting way less ammo overall. But even beyond that, as I did mention, those recent resource production little machines you could place down at workshops have also been nerfed. This only affects some of them, but basically now when you go up to it, let's say the aluminium one, it'll give you aluminium ore instead of aluminium scrap. So that means you have to then take this ore to a chemistry station and actually spend additional resources to convert it into scrap. There's one extra step added here. So these two were 100% confirmed, but Bethesda addressed them themselves, they are now in the official patch notes, but a lot of users are reporting additional changes that aren't confirmed, haven't been officially addressed. Reddit user come by Meowth has actually compiled a really good post of all of these. I went off this while actually trying to get some of the footage for this video. I will have a link to it down below. But one of the other really notable ones that has a lot of corroborations is actually that fusion cores overall have been nerfed. They expire faster now as you're walking around in power armor. It's one of those things that for me is pretty hard to tell because when you're walking around I don't particularly pay attention, especially in Fallout 76. It feels like fusion cores were so easy to get anyway. There's no concrete numbers on how much of a reduction it is, but but I could somewhat notice that, yeah, the fusion core was going down faster, especially while sprinting. This wouldn't shock me because fusion cores, again, were super easy to get, but also they were buffed from Fallout 4. So they lasted longer in Fallout 76 than they did in Fallout 4, and then of course were also easier to get, so maybe they just reverted them to their Fallout 4 state. Several exploits were patched, I talked about this in my video yesterday. I think one reason Bethesda might not mention these is because they don't want to bring attention to exploits. There still are a ton of exploits in the game, unlimited carry weight, duping, so things along those lines still do exist, but at least some of them have been fixed. 
People are reporting noticeable nerfs to some of the flora you could actually pick up from blast zones. If you don't know, those are like unstable flora, so you have to use them at a chemistry station, and that flux is now apparently expiring after 5 to 10 minutes instead of 1 hour before. That's not totally confirmed, but multiple people have talked about it. But then there's also reports that legendary spawn percentages are reduced, so basically how often legendary spawns and how often they actually give you a good legendary. This one's very hard to verify because they're so rare already, so noticing if they're significantly more rare is quite the challenge but again it's another one that a lot of people are talking about a lot of people are reporting and then there's one final but also pretty big one people are also reporting just reduced damage overall this seems to be in particular affecting higher level players and basically when using stealth when using melee numerous people are saying they're doing less damage to higher level enemies now this could be some kind of placebo effect it could be people just thinking they're doing less damage for me i didn't honestly notice a huge change but again there's numerous people talking about this so i did want to bring it up if you guys are playing in a higher level, do you notice a difference, especially with melee and stealth in particular, or even the spawn rates of some of these legendary enemies? Are you having more trouble getting legendary items than you were previously? There's a few others out there, but those were some of the biggest ones and the most notable ones, and a lot of people are pretty upset about this, even though it's not new. It seems like the reason this time so many people are upset are it's actually nerfing many things. When you omit a positive change, such as the FPS cap being removed, then you are pleasantly surprised when you launch the game after reading the patch notes. But then of course, when you actually omit omit some negative changes to the game, you get the opposite effect when people launch the game after reading the patch notes. And for me at least, I, I just don't really get this. Were workshops overpowered? Did anyone think that? Like I would actually argue that they could have used a buff, not a nerf, to actually make them those highly contestable sites that Bethesda kind of talked about earlier on. A lot of people are bringing up the idea that by reducing the rate at which you could actually collect resources, it's going to extend the longevity of the game. You're going to have to spend more time trying to collect resources and actually doing the grind and it's going to make you put more hours into this game. Now of course that's total speculation, who knows why we actually got these changes, but I would like to know, I would like some reasoning as to why Bethesda felt workshop were overpowered. Just last week, they made a post saying that we know you're frustrated and angry at the state of things right now, whether it's the issues you're running into the game or the lack of communication about fixes, updates, or news. Well, when you say a statement like that just a couple of weeks ago, and then you make a patch like this with so many changes that are negative and went unreported, that doesn't really seem like you're listening. It doesn't really seem like you are doing what you just said. Some other people are speculating that they just didn't want negative user feedback, that since a lot of these things were negative for users, they deliberately left them out of the patch notes. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, maybe Bethesda is that short-sighted, but it seems like it would obviously blow up in their face if that's what they're attempting to do. In the long run, actually resulting in more negative feedback as we have right now, as opposed to if we knew about all these changes a week ago when the patch notes were originally released. So either way, I don't know. I feel like this is just another thing that's like a bad look for Bethesda. What's going on? How are silly things like this making their way through? How is it that pretty much every single week there's a new thing they messed up on? Now, personally, I don't honestly view it as that big of a deal. Should it have been in the patch notes? Yes. Is it the end of the world that it isn't? No, it's just frustrating as a consumer. And I think the reason we're seeing such an outrage and backlash is because there isn't a lot of consumer respect or appreciation left there, but that's a depleted a lot of that with everything else that went on. So even though this event in isolation might not be that big of a deal, when you look at the context, all the other stuff that happened before this, I feel like it gives you a better understanding of why people are saying what they're saying. And stuff like this makes me just feel like there's a management issue going on behind the scenes, that whoever's in charge of making sure this stuff gets done in the right way isn't doing a good job. Like if it truly is just Bethesda Game Game Studios Austin, who's putting out these patches, who's maintaining the game, maybe they need a management change, maybe they need additional staff, but it definitely seems like to me that something has to change on the back end. That's pretty gonna wrap it up for the fallout part of this video, but before we end things off, I do want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day, and this is an important one. This is one that may actually help you in life. So this semester I'm taking a course in forensic psychology, that's basically the intersection of psychology and the law, so it could be courtroom proceedings, it could be police, a lot of different things. But one thing I learned in this class that is really interesting is in police interrogations, cops can actually lie to you, like outright. There are certain limitations on this, but for example, a cop can say to you that he has evidence you committed a crime and then try and get you to confess to that crime. Like they might say, oh we found something with your fingerprints on it, proving that you were at the scene, proving you were involved. And a lot of research in psychology shows this leads to an increased rate of false confessions. To the extent where some people, some of the studies I was reading, the person basically was led to believe or made to believe they had done the crime they were being accused of. 
So they walked in thinking they were innocent, probably knowing they were innocent, but then the police provided this fake evidence and the person was like, well, I don't know how that evidence could exist and I be innocent. So then they kind of made the rationale that I must have done it and forgot. Just hearing about it probably sounds pretty crazy, but you have to understand the context. You're probably in a highly emotional state. If you're suspected of the crime, you're probably related to the crime in some way. Maybe it was a family member that was killed or something along those lines. But then even beyond that, some of these interrogations last like 12 hours. So you're in a room being interrogated very aggressively for 12 hours and they're saying they have evidence that you did a certain thing I feel like under that context it makes it a lot more plausible as to how some false confessions occur and to me it just simply seems insane that that's not illegal that that actually can occur so hey just keep it in the back of your head if you know you're innocent and you're being accused of a crime and they say they have evidence they might not either way that's pretty gonna wrap it up for this one as always again I thank you all for watching hopefully you enjoyed hopefully this is informative but with that I hope to see you all next time later